you are carrying a communicator device, uh, now is probably a good time to deactivate. And while you are doing so, I'll tell you a little bit about what we do here. You know, we're a publishing house as well as a bookstore. Behind these walls are our editorial offices. Um, we still publish anywhere from 12 to 15 books a year, from poetry to current events. Uh, we just published a book for Heidi Bogosian, kind of hot on the heels of the whole, like, it's Snowden controversy, the book's called Spying on Democracy. Uh, we also initiated a new literary series. Michelle T is now on board as an editor. Uh, we've got new books out by Ali Leavegott, Beth Lissick, and much, much more to come. So a lot of really exciting stuff coming up. Also, event-wise, um, Poetry Month's coming up. We've got Matthew Zabruder, Kevin Young. Um, we've got a Don Carpenter tribute coming up at the California Book Club in May. Uh, in the fall, a Walter Benjamin symposium happening in arcades all over San Francisco. That's going to be a lot of fun. And in a year's time, the Dada World's Fair. Mm -hmm. It should be a lot of fun. Um, so, with that said, I encourage you all, please check out our website. And uh, also subscribe to our newsletter. Your information stays in-house. We never sell it. And uh, you get to find out about very cool events like this one the kind of stuff we publish, and also the kind of stuff we carry, you will find stuff on these shelves that you cannot find online, I'm happy to say. So, with that said, uh, a delight to have 1111 with us here tonight, founded in 2004 by Yumna Chalala and Gail Romansanta. Uh, it is the biannual journal of literature and art published through the MFA program at the California College of the Arts here in San Francisco. Their mission is to provide a forum for risk and experimentation, which is something that here at City Lights, of course, we are totally behind, and to serve as an exchange between writers and artists. Uh, Hugh Beam Steinberg is here with us. He's the editor, and he's going to be joined by five other writers. Uh, please join us in giving him a very warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I am very, very honored and delighted to be able to host a reading for 11.11 here at City Lights. This is one of the most venerable rooms in all of literature, and this is just such a wonderful experience to be able to present um, five really amazing writers in this space, and so thank you all very much for coming. Um, I'm going to read the introductions for the readers, and. Um, get that out all the way, and we're just going to go straight through, and we'll have a good time. Um, one thing I want to make as, as, a, as a note before introducing Kenneth Wong is that um, Kenneth Wong is going to be reaching, reading the work of Mong Chong Wei, um, and that's part of a new initiative we're starting with 1111, where we hope to feature in our online issues um, have it be a space for Burmese writing and translation. And this comes about through a strange coincidence, which is that on our fan page, the country with the most fans for 11.11 is Myanmar. And we were trying to figure out how that could possibly be, and we thought maybe it was auspicious with the number 11. It turns out that their largest news organization in Burma is called the Eleven Media Group. And so we wound up having this strange captive audience of people that were essentially thinking that we were their equivalent of Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take advantage of that. Um, Eleven Eleven is nimble, if, if anything. Um, so let me finish with the introduction. So Kenneth Wong is the author of A Prayer for Burma, 2003 Santa Monica Press. He was born and raised in Rangoon, Burma. He blames Shakespeare and Dickens for his inner, insuppressible urge to write. He's addicted to Burmese tea leaf salad and India chai, and he's going to be reading work of Mong Chuan Wei. Eleven years after his death, Mong Chuan Wei's poetry continues to haunt the curbside tea shops and bookstalls where Burma's literati can congregate to swap rhymes and sip tea. His poetry collections included The Fake Mong Chuan Wei, Flea Infested Bed, the, wi the Whining of the Inner Truth, High Class Water and Train. A small collection of his poems appeared in English translation in the anthology Bones Will Crow. Nana K. Tomazi lives and writes in Oakland, California in a small apartment with the company of a small dog. 
Her work has appeared in Ballyhoo Stories, 50 States Project, the International Museum of Women's Imagining Ourselves Online Exhibit, Southwester Journal, and Zizma. She co-eds Monday Night, a journal of new literature, and like most other prose writers, she's currently working on the next great American novel. Kate Robinson is a poet and intermediate intermedia book artist from Oakland, California, where she co-curates the Manifest Reading and Workshop series and creates artist books under the imprint Manifest Press. Her work has appeared in Slightly West, Blazebox, and Jupiter, Jupiter 88, and is housed in special collections of SUNY Buffalo. Kate has taught interdisciplinary collaborative workshops at Evergreen State College, Mills College, California College of the Arts, and Oakland School for the Arts, and is a 2014 Mills College Book Fellow. Emily Meg Weinstein writes this website, Super Lefty, where she has published over 300 essays. Her work has also appeared in various publications and anthologies. She's the author of two chapbooks, and she's the nonfiction editor of The Amazing Forklift, Ohio. She lives, writes, teaches, and climbs in Oakland, California. And lastly, Lewis Ellingham, born February 27, 1933, in Fort Wayne, Indiana, an established newspaper family. Older brother and twin sister, mother dead at age two, Catholic school, San Francisco, 1954, beginning in North Beach, still in the city. With Kevin Killian, wrote Poet Be Like God. His poems include The, Gir the Birds and others that followed. Let's have a round of applause and welcome our leaders. Thank you.